All right, to the over 373,000 of you that want to get your hands on some cash, I got 15 questions, but we got to start with number one. Here it is. Which of these is true about the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie? It's mostly live action, it's entirely in Russian, or there's no Sonic in it? Well, man, wouldn't that be a twist for the ages? I loved this Sega game! How do you make a movie about a beloved video game character controversial? By making it live action and making Sonic's appearance, let's just say a little questionable or interesting. Take a look for yourself. Okay, pal, I want answers. Basically, it looks like I'm gonna have to save your planet. But it is mostly live action. Live action is the answer here for Q1. 278,909 of you got that one. I mean, everyone is just saying it's interesting because he's got like fluffy tresemme hair and human teeth and he's supposed to have like sharp pointy quills, right? Nonetheless, I'm sure we're all excited to see that and Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, oh yeah. Hey, before we move on, why don't you hook yourself up with an extra life tonight? That question was a little easy for Q1, but they're gonna get tougher, so you're gonna wanna have one of these in your back pocket to use in case a tough round gets you out. You can also earn them for free by playing five days in a row, or of course, inviting friends. And don't tell me you ran out of friends. Download HQ on your grandma's phone or something. Come on, you got this. Q2. The letters HE represent the chemical symbol for what? Helvetica, helium, or helicopter? Uh, I'm just gonna throw this out there. One of these is not like the others, right? Yeah, because only one of these is a chemical element, which means the only possible answer here is helium. Helium is your answer here at Q2, and I didn't need to, you know, change my voice for you to get that one. 320,933 of you knew that one. Did you know we're actually going through a pretty major helium shortage right now? So I'm just warning you, I don't want you to wait on the birthday balloons. Just looking out. Q3, complete the iconic 90s hip hop lyric. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a what? In squalor, nightcrawler, or a baller? Oh, that was so hard not to sing that, but I think I still kind of did. I love a good one hit wonder, right? And this one still holds up. The lyric in this Skilo classic is. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I, I, wish I had a girl who looked good. I would call her. Yeah, but first he wishes he was a baller, of course. Don't we all? Baller is your answer here at Q3. 290,647 of you. Wishing you were a little bit taller, wish you were a baller. Well, you can be if you make it through this quiz. But hey, balling ain't easy, and neither are the rest of the questions. Q4. Which of these places is farthest north? North Carolina, North Dakota, or North Korea? The North remembers, doesn't it? It shouldn't be too difficult to narrow this down just a bit, right? North Dakota is definitely north of North Carolina. But what about North Korea? That's the curveball. They should call it south of North Dakota, Korea. North Korea's latitude is about 40 degrees and North Dakota's is around 47. North Dakota, just a little bit more north than North Korea. 177,434 of you getting that one right. Wow, knocking out over 130,000 of you at Q4. Ooh, the questions are only getting tougher from here on out. Q5, which of these is a variety of tomato, Gravenstein, Bronze Star, or Gold Medal? All right, tomato connoisseurs, here we go. We got our better boys, early girls, mortgage lifters, tigerellas, big rainbow, Mr. Stripey, big beef, and my personal favorite, the money maker. But there is one with a bold claim of quality right in the title. You're welcome to test out those gold metal tomatoes anytime you want. They look delicious. Crack a little salt and pepper on those bad boys and ooh, Gold medal is your answer here. 181,347 of you know your stuff about tomatoes. All right. I mean, listen, I make a mean Sunday sauce. I call it sauce, not gravy. Tell me what you call it in the chat. So I got to know my tomatoes. Q6. What rival said Thomas Edison lived in utter disregard of the most elementary rules of hygiene? 
Henry Ford, Mark Twain, Nikola Tesla. He said you stink! In Old English, of course. Not a lot of love lost between these guys, right? Nikola Tesla said this about his old rival Edison. He also said Edison had no hobby, cared for no sort of amusement of any kind. Uh, sick antiquated burn if I do say so myself, Nikola Tesla. Tesla is your answer here at Q675,159 of you knew that one. I mean, he put it so eloquently. He literally said, you don't bathe, you smell. But he said it in such a nice way, you can't be mad at it. Q7, which of these is a cross between a male horse and a female donkey? Hinny, Jack, or a mule? All right, we're crossing things here at Q7. A jack is a male donkey, and a mule is a cross between a male donkey and a female horse. Stick with me. But a hinny is a cross between a male horse and a female donkey. And look how cute! Oh, hinny! What you doing? What a cutie. Hinny is the answer here at Q7. 48,887 of you got that one. Whoa! Is this a savage question if I've ever seen it? Over two. 200,000 of you out here, man! That is a rough one. A hinny, well, so cute. Listen, I don't know much about a hinny, but I know there's a cross between a zebra and a donkey, and it is the cutest thing ever. For those of you that got out on that savage question, find that picture, it'll make you feel better. Q8, what did Doc Brown say he was doing right before he invented the flux capacitor? Viewing the moon landing, hanging a clock, or buying plutonium? Doc Brown, what were you doing? Well, the date was November 5th, my birthday, 1955. Long, long before I was thought about. That was the day Doc invented time travel. He was standing on the edge of his toilet, hanging a clock. The porcelain was wet, he slipped, hit his head on the sink, and when he came to, he had a revelation. A flux capacitor, of course, but he was hanging a clock when he thought of it. 81,278 of you getting that one right. And now we will never look at a DeLorean the same again, right? Thank you, Doc Brown. All right, questions are getting real tough. Here we go, Q9. Which of these terms means a musical piece should be played at a moderately slow tempo? Andante, allegro, or legato? Shout out to all my musically inclined or musicians in the chat that know this one, right? Allegro means lively or moderately fast, and legato means smoothly, but andante means at walking pace or moderately slow and flowing. And Dante is the answer we were looking for here. 41,676 of you knew that one. And we're not keeping things and Dante here. No, no, no. The pace for the rest of this game is prestissimo. Kind of the same way I play air guitar. Nice and fast. Q10. Which planet in the solar system reaches the coldest surface temperature? Neptune, Uranus, or Saturn? Talking about the coldest surface temp. Even though Neptune is farther from the sun, Uranus is actually the coldest planet, perhaps because of its odd orientation or energetic atmosphere. Uranus is the answer here. You cold. 22,851 of you knew that one. You know, all I know is that if that planet is in Capricorn, then be prepared to have an anxious month. That's what my horoscope said. Q11, here we go. Will Smith's number one soundtrack hit from 1999 samples a song by the artist famous for what other song? Shaft, Living in America, or Superstition? If you can't stand the heat, then stay out of the wild, wild west. The 1999 Will Smith song, Wild Wild West, samples the song, I Wish, by Stevie Wonder who also sang, of course, Superstition. Bam, 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 Oh, you better knock on wood, throw salt over your shoulder. Q12, here we go. Which of these is a perfect anagram of a US state? An old stone on my wig or with my ring? 
Come on, you know what an anagram is, right? When you scramble up words to create new ones? On my wig is an anagram for Wyoming. On my wig is the answer here. 6,900 of you, wow! You have the smarts to get that done quickly. That t would take me too much time to try to scramble that out. Hey, if you enjoyed this question though, stick around for words at 9.30 with my girl Anna. She's got more stuff like this. Q13, which of these modern day countries was not a part of the 19th century land known as New Granada? Panama, Colombia, or Chile? This Spanish Viceroyalty of colonial Latin America included present-day Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, and its capital named Santa Fe, and it's where Bogota currently sits. And finally, Panama, no Chile. Oh, lo siento, Chileans, no Chile here. 5,339 of you got that one. Es no es correcto, Chile, no, is not a part of that. All right. We got two left. These are the toughest questions of the bunch. Can you hang with me? Five grand is on the line, Q14. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier is named for a character created by the author of which of these? Ivanhoe, Bleak House, or Emma? The Dandy Dinmont Terrier. You know, that small little cutie with the long body, short legs, and it's got like a cute little top knot. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier is named for a character in the book Guy Mannering by Sir Walter Scott, who also wrote Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe is your answer here at Q14. 4,427 of you got that. Okay, I like that. 1,300, over 1,300 eliminated here at Q14. And you know what that means. You made it all this way and you are into the final round. It all comes down to this question right here. You fought for it for 14 questions. You got one left. Don't blow it now, come on, you got five grand on the line. Q15, which of these is in the title of a real Bernstein Bears book? Lost in Cyberspace, Homeschool Adventures, or Preventing Bird Flu? You are reading it correctly, it is not spelled wrong. The Bernstein Bears, I promise. Listen, they're just like you and me, but they live in a tree. Will the cubs get whiplash as they zoom along the information highway? The Bernstein Bears Lost in Cyberspace was published in 1999. Lost in Cyberspace is our final answer here and we have 2,200 new winners. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh yes, 2,200 winners, I love it. We're not lost in cyberspace, we are thriving in cyberspace. Looks like $2.27 is what we're all taking home tonight, and by we, I mean you, we're giving you that. <laughs> And it's, I know what you're gonna say, but it's $2.27 more than you started with 18 minutes and 57 seconds ago. Michael DG, I see you there. Looking like Heisenberg with those glasses and hat. 227 is going your way. B Hig 47, 227 is going your way as well. What a game. Congrats to all of our winners. You came, you saw, you won some cash and you crushed it. Hey, stick around for words coming up next in just mere minutes with Anna Roisman. I'll be back tomorrow night for a little HQ Sports at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and we got a lot to cover. The Kentucky Derby is Saturday, so you better wear your most dapper digs. And someone please make me a mint julep. I'm Lauren Gambino. Until next time, thanks for playing. See ya.